Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. The Los Blancos take on Valencia at the Santiago Bernabeu. They would now be looking to return to winning ways in La Liga, and if we had to play a former Bordla side in Getafe the previous week, this time we are actually going to play the team managed by Bordla himself, and we all know the kind of troubles his teams have posed over the years. Real Madrid, on the other hand, are currently having a five point lead at the top of the table and are followed by Sevilla, who also have a game in hand, so it would be important that Real Madrid get some consistent wins in the league. Any points lost from here could turn out to be detrimental for the side. We don't want to provide any hope to our rivals by dropping more points, and Angelotti and co have a stern and gritty Valencia to overcome at the end of the night. So in this video, we'll do the match preview of Real Madrid versus Valencia. We'll go through the words of Carlo Angelotti, and lastly, we'll end this video by doing the match predictions. So come on, let's get started. And firstly, we speak about the opposition that we face today. Valencia currently sit 9th in the table with 28 points from 19 games. They have 7 wins, 7 draws and 5 losses. But if you closely look at the situation of Valencia, they are 4 points behind Champions Atletico who are currently 4th in the table and 2 points away from a Europa League spot. So definitely all the possibilities are still intact for Valencia. They still have a chance to have access to all major European competitions come the end of the season. And if Bortlas can manage to do it, it would be a much applauded feat. Especially if you look at the past few years, Valencia have certainly had some rough days in the rain. The club has been one of the worst managed in Spain. We often hear about how Bartomeu's board was successful in destroying the greatness of Barcelona, but Valencia have also had their own struggles in keeping the club afloat. From being one of the big fours of Spanish football history to being a club in turmoil, the Valencia fans have certainly been through a lot. The frustration towards the new ownership of Peter Lim has exploded in the past. The board couldn't handle the challenges of the pandemic. They had to cut down on the wage budget. Some of the players who were crowd favourites were shown the exit door. Club legend Danny Parejo and Francis Coquelin departed. Ferran Torres was allowed to leave the club for a relatively cheap transfer fee in an inflated market. And we could clearly see the anger in the protest of the fans. Amongst all the things, the performances on the pitch haven't been that convincing as well. They spent a lot of time near the relegation zone last season. The former manager, Javi Garcia, wasn't able to conjure the performances which would satisfy the Valencia fan base. And as a result, he was sacked at the end of the campaign. And then the reins of the club were handed to Bordelas. It was an interesting signing as the people were aware of his exploits with Getafe. Bordelas, who himself was looking for a new challenge, took over the responsibility of bringing Valencia back to where they belong. And up till now, we can say that they have been doing decently well. It has taken Bordelas some time to impose his philosophies on the team. It took him a while to get his ideas through to the players. And after spending more time, he has managed to make Valencia a physical team. They have become an aggressive side who like to play direct football. They have become defensively sound deploying the 4-4-2 and it does look like the players are on board with the ideas of the coach. The players are not at all hesitant to put in some crunching tackles. They have become a typical borderless side who commit fouls and try to disrupt the flow of games. They're good with set pieces. The players don't hesitate to put in lunging challenges to bring down the opposition even at the cost of playing dirty. And what we can say is that we can expect Valencia to have a similar attitude when they take on Real Madrid tonight. And coming to the team news, Valencia will have a few major absentees in the game. Hugo Duro will miss out through suspension. Gabriel Paulista, Dimitri Folkier and Tony Lato would be available due to injury and it's also likely that Bortolas would be without the service of Carlos Soler. And coming to Real Madrid, this as you see is the squad list for the game. You can see that we have the timely return of Vinicius Jr. We have Mr. Dynamic Brazilian and it's fantastic that he's back in the side. Danny Carvajal hasn't been included but he has been sported training with the team. Some reports are suggesting that he would be fit for the match against Barcelona but let's wait for more updates on the Spanian. Gareth Bale is still injured and Luka Jovic is still out due to COVID. Moving on, let's hear what the coach had to say in the pre-match press conference. Angelotti was asked about Valverde and about the Ceballos incident. But firstly, while previewing the match, the coach said, It's a game against a team that are having a good spell and are very well organised. We have to get back to playing how we were before the Christmas break. The team is in pretty good shape. We've got a few players back who were out with niggles and we are focused on taking the three points. Then the coach also spoke about the areas where Real Madrid need to improve. We haven't been off to a flying start this year and Angelotti addressed the issues. He said, After Cadiz and Getafe, the offensive aspects against tight teams need to be improved with more vertical passes and more movement without the ball. We are thinking about it, we are working with videos, but we do not have much time to do it. Then Angelotti was asked about the role of Valverde in the side. We have seen that he has received relatively fewer minutes than what we were expecting in the 
beginning of the season. He had some injury issues, but since his return, we haven't seen much of him. He has struggled to get minutes ahead of KCM, and he hasn't had a consistent run of games. But if we do a fair assessment of the way he has played in the past two games, he does seem to be a bit off the pace. So Angelotti spoke about Valverde as he said he got his role in the team. At times, it's more important part, and sometimes it's less so, but he's got a part to play. He's a player I trust deeply because he has such quality. I don't expect anything more of him than what he's doing. It's true he perhaps hasn't played as much lately as he did early on, but that comes with the competition that exists at Real Madrid. Modric, Casemiro and Cruz have had more game time so far, but I'm pleased with all the guys who have played less than those three. They have done the job whenever they've been called upon. Then Angelotti was asked about the controversy surrounding Danny Ceballos. He has been all over the Spanish media. He has received massive criticism for his attitude towards Carlo Angelotti while he was coming on in the game against Alcoyano. He was seen acting in a rude way and Angelotti addressed the media regarding that. He said, It was a case of what happens when a player is eager to play and wants to get back. I wanted to give Sambayo some playing time as I explained to him. However, I didn't feel it was the right game for him after an injury at a ground where he might have had some problems, but he still wanted to play. So when I thought I'd bring him on, there were five minutes left and I waited just a bit longer. I told him perhaps he was right. He may have got a bit angry, but that's all it was and I have faith in him. And lastly, the coach was asked if the recent struggles of Real Madrid are hinting towards a dependence on Vinicius Junior and Angelotti ruled out any such notion. He replied, I think it's a bit too much to claim that there's dependence at Real Madrid. We have a player who has done brilliantly in the early parts of the season and who has helped us win games just like Benzema and Militao have done. Of course, Vinicius has been important for us in the first half of the season. He's back in good shape and everyone's happy. Vinicius Junior gives you running in behind. He's strong on one-on-one. -on -one. He's swift on the counters and gets you goals. If I had to highlight one thing, it's pretty clear that if you give him space, he can be very, very dangerous. So that concludes the press conference thoughts of Carlo Angelotti. And let's wrap up this video by doing the match predictions. In goal, Thibaut Courtois should return between the stakes. In the back line, we should see Edda Militao, David Alaba and Fallon Mendy. Lucas Vasquez should continue to start in the absence of Danny Carvajal. And in the midfield, all things are indicating that Angelotti would stick to the midfield of Modric, Cruz and Casemiro. And finally in attack, Vinicius Jr. and Benzema should return to lead the attacking front. And I'll predict that on the right, Angelotti will go with Marco Asensio. So that, as you see, is my predicted lineup. And as for the scoreline predictions, I predict Real Madrid 1, Valencia 0. Valencia have not won a single game away from home against Real Madrid since 2008. And I expect the same trend to continue. It's going to be a tough game, but hopefully Real Madrid will come out as the victors in the clash. And that is all I have here. Do let me know how you're feeling ahead of the game and what scoreline are you predicting right in the comments below. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.